Welcome to our daily devotion. The Methodist Church of Barbados invites you to sing, pray, and worship with us as we declare God's glory and celebrate His mighty acts. And today we have come to lift up Jesus in this place and ask Him to renew us and revive us again. Let's sing this old hymn together. Jesus, we do not know what tomorrow has in store for us, but we are not afraid because we have you. You have promised us your continuous presence, and that is enough to know. We place ourselves in your care tonight, certain that tomorrow you will be with us as we journey on, performing our work with gladsome heart and to the glory of your precious name. Save us from the follies and enticements of sin. Uh, keep uh, from our hearts all envy, bitterness, resentment, and discontent. Make us see that each task laid at our door is a privilege, each duty an opportunity, and each assignment a challenge. Bless us with patience, thoughtfulness, and goodwill towards each other. May all that we do say and everything give honor and praise to your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer. You have implanted in our heart an undying hope that promises rest after the struggles of this present life and an everlasting peace in the glories of your eternity. Look with favor upon us and mercifully help us through the difficult times of our lives. Be with us as we face the hardships and irritations of today, the temptations of Satan, on the sins and doubts of our own hearts. Graciously take us by our hands and lead us hour after hour in the sunshine of your grace. Direct our footsteps on the journey of life to render service to you and all people. Keep out of our day all harm and danger of both body and soul and let us live continuously in your presence. I pray for all those who are weary and burdened for all who are discouraged, for all who mourn and weep, and for all who are lonely and distressed. Draw closer to them and to me. 
Give your everlasting renewing strength and preserve us all in the saving faith to the end of days. Through Jesus, my precious Savior and friend. Amen. Jesus heals the centurion's servant. The reading is taken from Matthew 8 verses 5 to 13 and it goes like this. When he entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him appealing to him and saying, Lord, my servant is laying at home paralyzed in terrible distress. And he said to him, I will come and cure him. And the centurion answered, Lord, I'm not worthy to have you come under my roof. But only speak the word, and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man of under authority, with soldiers under me. And I say to one, Go, and he goes, and to another, Come, and he comes, and to my slave, Do this, and the slave does it. Now when Jesus heard him, he was amazed, and said to, them, to those who followed him, Truly I tell you, in no one in Israel have I found such faith. I tell you, many will come, from the east and west and will eat with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven while the heirs of the kingdom will be thrown into outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth and to the centurion Jesus said go let it be done for you according to your faith and the servant was healed in that hour
This miracle takes place soon after the Sermon on the Mount. Matthew 7, 28 says, Now when Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowd were astounded at his teaching. And this is only one of three recorded instances when Jesus healed uh, a Gentile. And it is to my mind truly a fascinating experience. The centurion is an enigma. He is a man of war in the Caesar's Roman army. And their remit would have been to keep the peace in this Jewish section, an activity normally carried out with an iron fist. And he would normally have regarded people like Jesus as instigators who would seek to disturb this peace and give him stress and hence a person to be wary of. That he was aware of Jesus may not be a surprise then, but that he would develop a respect, develop faith, and trust would be quite shocking. Furthermore, he was well aware of Jewish laws, as he indicated in verse 8, Lord, I am not worthy um, to have you come under my roof. This miracle is also found in Luke, where the centurion sends a contingent of Jews, possibly his Jewish friends, on his behalf. But here, he, Matthew has him go face to face. Approaching Jesus in this way, he is also uh, demonstrating a level of humility that one would expect from a Rome, uh, that one would not expect from a Roman leader of a significant cohort of soldiers. Here we see unfolding a series of characteristics in this centurion that would be good examples for us, his modern day disciples, to follow. In whatever station we are in in life, Jesus commands respect. Sometimes we can get so carried away with the idea of him being loving and caring, which he is, of him being our personal friend, which he is, and forget that he's also God incarnate, creator and sustainer, and hence well worthy of our respect, of our awe, of our beings. He cannot be and should not be taken lightly or for granted. This soldier attributed to him that level of due regard. His level of humility is also a good example. As a centurion, he would be well regarded, even feared. He confesses that he is a man of power. He says to one come, he says to another go, and they come and go. And his instructions are carried out without question, instantly. And yet, he says Jesus is not worthy to come under his roof. Well, we don't seem to have a problem with Jesus coming under our roof, or so we claim. And uh, even though our roof under our roof can be so easily compromised by our actions, by our actions towards the inhabitants who are living there with us, how we treat them and how we interact, by our interactions on something like the phone, the landline, and especially on our cell phones, uh, when we see what we allow, and what we send on and what we access, our treatment of visitors, especially those we are a bit fed up with, would we really want him under our roof continuously indeed? Would this be a comfortable place for him if he were to come to stay with us for a little while? Hmm. Then his level of faith, unprecedented even among his people, the Jews. Indeed, um, he indicated that not in all of Israel has he found that. And he indicated this to his followers. Among his followers could even have been his disciples. Jesus was amazed. Imagine that. Jesus taken by surprise. Whoa. A what of us. Are there opportunities that we take that could take him by surprise too? Do we supply these opportunities or have we from time to time provided opportunities that demonstrate the opposite? He's taken by surprise by our lack of faith. He's taken by surprise ease with which we can turn our backs on him. He's taken by surprise with the way in which we mistreat one another. He's taken by surprise and shocked maybe at some of the offenses we carry out. But yes, we should also look for those well in positive occurrences, those that are deemed to have be good examples of practices that are worthy of note. After all, the church fathers chose to include this instance involving a member of not just the Gentile community, 
but also of the a member of the hated Roman oppressors. So they must have thought that this was a fine example for us to include his modern day non-Jewish disciples. Again, the power of faith and approaching him on behalf of others. Once again, clear examples of Jesus at work, especially at this time. There are so many who are in problems as a result of COVID, the loss of a job, the loss of contact with friends and family here and especially abroad. I know of one family whose first grandchild was being born in New York and they decided to travel. They had to, um, of course, get tested here. Then um, when, they, uh, when they got there, they had to be in quarantine before they can even see the youngster. And when they come back, they have to get tested again and then they have to go into quarantine yet again when they return. These are situations that we now seem to be calling normal. Uncertainty of the future is another air for many. Much to pray for, much to pray about, even within our societies, even within our church, even among people who may be sent down, we may be sent down next from Sunday to Sunday. And here, we see a direct example of the power of prayer and what we can get involved with in connecting to Jesus. Finally, his concern for those under his uh, guidance, not just the important soldiers for which he is responsible, but for a loving servant. Do we go to this amount of trouble? Do we treat them in that way, um, both consciously or do we unconsciously claim and pretend to be, but in our heart of hearts, we are not really on point there. Uh, here, this centurion, a leader of significance at the time, a man feared, had this concern for his servant, not just one of his soldiers, but his servant. Are we always up to this level of care? My brothers and sisters, I commend to you then the action of this soldier. Maybe we too can operate in an amazing Christian manner that would woe Jesus. I wish you God's wishes blessing on you and the, you, the listeners, and your families and acquaintances. As the evening shadows fall, closing out the light of day, come merciful Savior with your benedictions into my heart. Bring to me the full forgiveness of all my sins and grant me your glorious peace, which passes all understanding. Relax my body and give me much needed rest. Remove all worrisome thoughts from my mind and let me sleep undisturbed while you watch over me. Bless all your people far and near and give healing and strength to the sick. If I have grieved anyone today, forgive me. If I have offended you, gracious Savior, blot out these sins. If I have been neglectful and thoughtless, make me different tomorrow. Protect all your children from want and worry, from bitterness and resentment, from strife and anger. Keep us all in steadfast faith and give me the grace to resist every temptation to sin. Keep me humble and pure in heart. Hear my prayer, almighty Savior and friend. Amen and Amen.
See the Lord, thy keeper stand, omnipotently near. Lo, he holds thee by the hand, and banishes thy fear. Shadows with his wings thy head, guards from all impending harms, round thee and beneath are spread the everlasting arms. God shall bless thy going out, shall bless thy coming in, kindly compass thee about, and guard from every sin. Lean upon thy father's breast, he thy quiet spirit keeps. Rest in him, securely rest, thy guardian never sleeps. Brothers and sisters, we go out to live and share the story of faith, the story of life with the world around us. We share the faith in word and in deed, in speech and in action. As we go out to give a living witness, as we go out to testify to God's love active in the world, Go knowing that God goes with us, sharing the laughter and the hope and the fears and the tears. We go in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and the people of God say, Amen.
of our daily devotion. We trust it has been a blessing to you. Now together, let us hold fast to his word and may it dwell in all of us richly.